Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And I'm a ghost. Yeah, I'm a ghost. Strangest thing. I died last week watching Ghost Dad. Zipper stuff, you know, he didn't mean to do it, so he has a bump around the house because he makes him like a You would have done the same. But if there's anything that this movie has taught me is that death is no reason to stop working. Just keep going on with your everyday life and comedic possibilities will fall in your lap. Sarsaparilla good that of more any got you friends. Hey say. Malcolm, while I'm doing my review, could you do that outside? Why am I doing this again? I told you, it's the only way to continue seeing and hearing me as a ghost. But why? There's no rhyme or reason to it. I don't know, it just is. Now go back to doing jumping jacks dressed as Gandalf the Grey while reciting the dialogue to Big Lebowski backwards. Just for real, a good brain. And why do I have to be dressed as sexy Dorothy while wearing a sombrero? Why is there even a sexy Dorothy costume? Who the fuck is turned on by sexy Dorothy? I didn't make up the nonsensical rules of the afterlife. I just know that if you two stop doing that, I'll disappear, the review will be over, and both of you will be out of a job. Got it? This is a bunch of bullshit. Up, 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 in your Dorothy voice. Golly gee, Mr. Critic, this sure is a lot of bullshit! It's but a small price to pay to be in the world of the living. Now away with you, the dead grieve at your presence. I thought I'd like him better dead. Dorothy voice! I thought I'd like him better dead! <sighs> yes, there's a lot of crazy rules about the afterlife that apparently we didn't know about, but that was sort of the thing in movies for a while. The same way Vampires and Zombies has kind of been popular in media recently, ghosts were really popular in the late 80s and early 90s, presumably starting with the popularity of Ghostbusters. After that little blockbuster, suddenly every movie had a spook specter or ghost in it, all connecting with either a quirky afterlife, a bizarre haunting, or just about anything with comedic possibilities. Well, another thing the late 80s and early 90s liked to do was combine stuff. Yeah, because we clearly don't do that nowadays, of course. Enter Bill Cosby, who at the time had the number one TV spot with The Cosby Show for years. He was clean, he was friendly, he was a good role model, and he made everybody laugh. That is, on television. His movie career continued to tank with bomb after bomb as Hollywood seemed to be hinting that unless Cosby can pull off a successful film with the next one, they were gonna yank him as a main star of the big screen and keep him a main star of the little screen for the rest of his life. What followed was a movie career dangling on the edge, knocked over by a spitball of deafening silence where there should have been laughter. This is that spitball. Directed by Sidney Poitier, yes, that's Sidney Poitier. They call me Mr. Tibbs. They'll be calling you much worse after they see this film. Ghost Dad is a fascinating experiment to see if two successful people re-entering two unsuccessful fields can somehow produce a successful... not this. The answer, of course, is too painful to sit through, too painful to talk about, and too tempting not to have me be in pain over. So let's take a look at the final nail in the coffin that really did make Cosby's movie career a ghost. This is Ghost Dad. We see Cosby in the very familiar position that most comedic dads are in, not having enough time for his kids because he's too busy being not funny. With his wife having passed away from Get the Bitch Out of the Film Isis, Cosby finds he has to cut corners by having a recording of himself read his kids a bedtime story. Okay, honey bun, that's enough for tonight. I had to work late again this weekend. Now, make me louder, hold me up to the door. Good night, Diane. Don't wait up for me. I never do. You know, if he's so damn busy with his job and all, how did he have time to record all this? Couldn't you have spent that time making the recording to be with your kids instead? Daddy, can you come play with me? I'm sorry, Bun Bop, but I gotta do this recording to make up for the fact that I can't spend time with you. You know, it's thinking like that that made you do Leonard sick. I thought we agreed never to mention that movie in this house. Things don't get much better when he forgets his oldest daughter's birthday, so he puts shaving cream and a candle on a hat. That ought to solve the problem. My father on my ninth birthday dressed up in a bunny costume for a whole week. A whole week? A whole week because the zipper stuck. You know, he didn't mean to do it, so he had to bump around the house because he made him like a bunny for a whole week. <laughs> well, I'll give this movie this. I do legitimately want to see him dead. You forgot. You completely forgot, Bucko. Admit it. If everything goes the way I think, the company is also going to give me a car. And if they do, you can have Grumpy. 
Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh, Daddy, can I drive it today? Oh, please, I promise I'll be incredibly careful. Thursday. Evan, I will take you to Diana. work. I'll take you. Oh, please. Wow, that must be quite the car that she's excited about. Quite the incredible, awesome piece of shit Clark Griswold mobile you've ever seen in your life. Hey, maybe next week he'll let you cruise around in that hot rotting minivan. You know, the one with two entire horsepowers in it? I was stopping. Well, how are you, Stuart? And from here, Cosby takes a merry stroll down nerdy stereotype lane. Yes, because this movie is too lazy to steal from other stereotypes, it focuses instead on just one. The 80s nerd, and all the incarnations that this decade pushed out with it. You got the Urkel nerd, the secretary nerd, the old relic nerd, and of course, the businessmen nerds. And for a comedian who enforced that any person of any color can be in any position, there sure does seem to be a lot of crusty old white guys running things, aren't there? Gentlemen, you all know Elliot Hopper, huh? Oh, yeah. A black one. Get you tickling Mr. Nero's wife in Macy's window. All bets are off. <laughs> <laughs> but things go awry when he steps into a cab driven by a crazy cab driver. Going a little fast, aren't we? Hey, shouldn't you be sorting sidewalks across from the McAllister's house? The road is that way. <laughs> Ten crazy minutes to, oh my god, am I a ghost dad? Oh, no, 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 no. There is no way I'm starring in this horse crap. No, no, I'm out. I'm gone. I'm gone. Fuck my contract. I don't care. I give you $20 to stop. I give you 40 I've got $76. All you have to do is stop the cab. Hey, come on. You're driving so fast, you nearly lost the giant screen projection behind us. Do you accept the Lord Satan as a supreme being? So it looks like the cab driver is a crazy Satanist. Typical? As Cosby convinces him that he is Satan himself. Doubly typical? And convinces him to pull the cab over. But just as he sees why white people should never drive cabs, he opens the car door, plunging into the river. He makes his way back up to find that nobody can see him, and apparently nobody can touch him either. This, of course, means he comes to a horrible realization. I'm not dead. I know, I know I'm not dead. This is, I'm dreaming. I gotta wake up. Wake up. Wake up. I'm not dead. I gotta get out of this dream. That's right. He's not very funny in a movie on his own and desperately needs kids to work off of. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. What? Hi, Daddy. You can see me? What? You can see me! My mouth is moving, but I can't hear anything. But in a strange combination of rules, Cosby finds that people can see him in the dark, but not in the light. And on top of that, they can't hear him even though he can hear himself. You can't hear me, but you can see me. You can't hear me, but I can hear myself. Also, if he concentrates, he can touch stuff, but if he doesn't, things float right through him. And if he doesn't keep focus, his voice doesn't match up with his body. This name's on. And what else, what else? Uh, you don't put him in daylight, you don't get him wet, and you don't feed him after midnight. Daddy, are you going to go away like Mommy did? No, honey. I'll smack on a while. I'm staying right here, okay? You know... It's funny how this ghost movie is supposed to be funny, but in a strange way, it's actually kind of creepier than scary ghost movies. Couldn't you just hear this creepy audio being listened in something like The Exorcist? Oh, it burns! Yeah, so it... It's not a funny movie! No, honey. I'll smack on all the while. Mom, you know how the kids love jello pudding, and you know it's made with fresh milk, so it's wholesome. But Cosby, it appears, is being sucked into another location via not very well hidden crane lift. Oh my god! Remember me for my inaudible gibberish! He gets transported to a genetically spliced version of Rowdy McDowell and the Dose X's guy, who's a scientist that puts metal things on his fingers to sync up his audio. Why would that help sync up his audio? Cause of death? I drown in a taxi cab. He then gives him a beaker of purple liquid and looks at a compass. I 
don't know why he's doing that either. You know, for a scientist, his answer to anything afterlife related is, it just is. What am I doing here? So, this movie clearly thinks that if Cosby plays his role as a broken Disney animatronic, somehow that'll get a laugh. Which, if it was in Disney World, it would. But here, it's just the death of comedy. They screwed up. It's the afterlife equivalent to misplacing your paperwork. It's rare, but it happens. Anyway, it's a sort of speciality of mine. You know, I've written a book on it, actually. Intercorporeal Maltransference. I'm the world's foremost authority on life after death. This is why I'm in no way going to contact anybody about the absolute proof that there's life after death, but instead partake in a depressingly unfunny dialogue about having a girl's name. In the book, it's spelled Edith. But it's pronounced Edith. What's the girl's name? Edith is a boy's name. Who are you named after? I was named after my grandmama. And they called her Edith? No, her name is Edith. So you see, it is a girl's name. No, it's not. Stand still. Maybe if we yell louder, this will somehow be funny. Nope. Then why are we still doing it? No. I want you to send me back. All right. So he sends him back to his family via lightsaber sound effect. Yeah, because nobody would recognize that sound. And he tries to figure out what to do next. How am I going to go to work? Wait a minute. Seriously? Seriously? You know, call me kooky, but I think being dead can at least warrant one day off. But the actual reason does make a little bit more sense. In the same way that sitting on a lamp somehow makes sense. What? You see, he didn't get any life insurance, and he wants to make sure his kids are financially secured before he goes. How am I gonna support myself and two kids? Why did you leave everything to the last minute? If he can go into work as usual and get the merger to go through okay, a ton of money will be given to him that he can pass on to his kids, making sure that they'll be okay. But, um, have you considered this other possibility? Show everyone that you're a fucking ghost and make goddamn millions off of it? I mean, if you told that scientist, or hell, any scientist, that you'll let him study you if you donate said shit ton of money, I think they would fucking do it! But no, it makes much more logical sense just to go into work as usual and have his kids turn off the light so that he can talk to people. No suspicion there. What are they doing? Uh, they're shutting out the light. And even that doesn't make sense, seeing how there's clearly scenes where you can see light touching him over and over again. I mean, Jesus Christ, he's in the lit doorway! Shouldn't half of his face be gone or something? I'm talking about the fact that I want to concentrate and the view in the sunshine, it's distracting. Okay, I'll buy that one. Though nothing in the script has given me reason to, as an actress, I just decide to give up. You have to take your life insurance physical this afternoon. So the doctor, of course in the dark, because when has a doctor ever needed light, tries listening for his heartbeat. <sighs> hmm. hmm, sounds a bit tinny, not much bass, and a lot of treble, but aside from that, fine. <laughs> Oops, almost forgot the easily excitable nerd. Woo! Yes, that's right. That face got him rolling in the aisles on Nick Jr. He uses a replica of Kira Knightley to fake the x-ray, and all that's left is the urine sample. Oh, give me a minute. <laughs> Why did she laugh at that? Do they usually watch when a urine sample is done? Give me a minute. <laughs> oh, 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 I have some issues. Some sick, creepy, authority alerting issues. So he sneaks in to steal some of Dana Carvey as Turtle Man's urine for the same test, because apparently he never looks down to aim when he does this kind of stuff. <laughs> This is what you think of when you think of a kid's comedy? A creepy shirtless guy's hand getting disturbingly close to an old guy's junk in the middle of a bathroom urinal. A family picture. 
Thus, the physical is complete, and for some reason, Cosby forgets to put on his mask, and for some reason, Turtle Man is the only one able to notice that he forgot. Earth! Earth! And yes, he, like many, would be the first to be institutionalized due to Ghost Dad. The chain of suffering had to start somewhere. Everything's all fine and good, but they have to hurry to get ready for this merger because they only have three days before he'll start to fade away. Why? Because we can make up any shit that we want. It's the afterlife, and because we don't know anything about it, we can assume that fucking anything makes logical sense. Riddick, are you sure we have to recreate the entire gameplay if Sam and Max hit the road? Hey, I can't help it if they lost the paperwork of the afterlife. This is the only way to keep me visible. Now where's my Dorothy voice? I thought as Max I didn't have to do that voice. When you address anyone else, no, but when you address me, yes. <sighs> but Critic, I just don't know how we could possibly reenact the entire game. I mean, we don't even have a giant trout to climb into. Well, find a way! Critic, I don't need her to do Sam and Max. I can do both voices on my own. What's wrong with my voice? Up, up, up. Uh, now you have to say it like a 1920s paperboy shouting a headline. I thought that I was doing... When you're the... talking to him as Sam, it's Max. But when you're talking to him as Malcolm, it's 1920s paperboy. Now I'm sorry, rules from upstairs. Extra, extra, read all about it! Critic's a big douche! Hey, hey! I feel my soul fading away from that disloyalty! Mm, that's better than her Max voice. Shut it, mister! Nah, he's right. But Critic! Apologize to him. As Max or the paper boy? Mm, go back and forth. I get a strong feeling that'll keep me here longer. <sighs> sorry, Malcolm! I didn't mean it. I've just been in a stinking mood on account of all of these voices! Apology accepted. People are saying it to me. Shut it, Sam! And show her how to do a better Max voice! Right. The trick is to get it all nasally, kind of like a flamboyant Bugs Bunny. It's good to be dead. So a full house bully gets in the car with Cosby's daughter and, of course, not wanting to raise suspicion, he mutilates his body like a possessed Muppet. Oh, oh. Now make sure you get nothing but crappy movies from here on out, Mr. Leguizamo! You are never, never, ever going to date that- Tony Ricker is the only guy in school that knows that I'm alive, and I will date him if I want to! And of course, as is on par with most of this movie, the family in no way tries to explain the obvious weird shit going on that obviously needs explaining. And I do not appreciate your interference in my pathetic social life. Nah, it's her time of the month. Th th that still works on us, right? But it's okay, because this movie addresses the important issues that anyone would be addressing under such bizarre and disturbing circumstances. How am I gonna be a magician at career day tomorrow without the trunk of doom? Okay, movie, um, can I bring you up to date on something I don't think you're quite aware of? Uh, here, come closer. Come closer. Little closer. Little closer. Little closer. Okay, you listening? You listening? You listening? Okay. He's dead! What is wrong with you people? Death is not some sort of weird personality trait. It's fucking death! The suspension of disbelief, and then the suspension of just not giving a shit. All of these are just excuses to force what they think is a funny scenario down our throats. But what they're missing is that comedy works when you can have something close to a relatable situation. And nobody, fucking nobody, would ever be able to relate with these choices. I mean, they just make no sense. It's like saying, oh my god, America just blew up. Well, let's go start making cream cheese. You don't think we should do something else? No, today. the cream cheese seems the most logical. Well, I can't see no reason not to. Let's do it. Cream cheese. Cream cheese. Hello. Uh, yo, is Diane there? This is Tony Ricker. Tony Ricker? Yeah, 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 that's me. Put the bitch on. That's what a teenage boy talking to the parent of a girl he wants to get with would say. Put the bitch on! Yeah! 
It's like you put a hidden camera in a real family's house because you guys are just capturing reality so well. In fact, are you sure you didn't do that? Are you sure you didn't put a hidden camera in some family's house and this is just the recordings that you're showing us? It's so fucking realistic! God! Movie, were you just raised in a burlap bag being beaten by unfunny DVDs of Carlos Mencia? And then suddenly released into the world thinking, yeah, I can represent the social interactions of the human animal? Well, let me tell you something, movie. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Little closer. Little closer. Little closer. Fuck you! So he grabs the boy through the telephone wires because... You can't prove a ghost can't do that. And he scares the living shit out of him. Put the bitch on the phone! The bitch! He's making it to the phone. I'm here, though. Think about dying. You know, it just hit me. Cosby in this movie is like a collection of all the unfunny Tim Allen grunts. Not the legitimately humorous ones, just the awkward brand. And if you so much as call, talk to me. So help me, I'll do things to you. You know what? This movie is so unpleasant and so nasty and so uncomfortable, I really am wondering if this was meant to be a legitimate scary film. What you are about to hear is real. It has not been edited or enhanced. The subject of some movies is so disturbing that those who experience them will never be the same again. And speaking of unintelligent, his son tries to perform an escape act, which of course the teacher allows. Hell, he's probably distracted by where the fuck he got a child-sized straitjacket. And during his merger, Cosby leaves in the middle and helps him out with his act. Which seems to work out well, seeing how he lost the key. Hi, kid. Dad! <laughs> I thought you had this big meeting you couldn't leave. Yeah, I did, but I thought about it and you're more important. Well, for the brief few moments that I'm here, I've also officially lost my job and the insurance which you kids were yelling at me for to begin with. But hey, what do I care if you're left in financial ruin? At least I helped you in a career you clearly showed you're not cut out for. How am I doing? You're getting an A. But then the scientist shows up and explains, oh, I can't do this shit justice, just listen. You're not a ghost. What am I? You didn't die, you just jumped out of your body, that's all. Keep listening. It's been rumored there was one other case in America years ago. Before he was able to find his body and get back into it, this poor fellow had to uh, wear, a, wear a bunny costume for a week. He was somewhere in Minnesota, I think. That was my father. I've always suspected this was an hereditary trait. Far out. So, um, if there's any of you out there that miss that, uh, apparently your soul can be scared out of its body, and this is a hereditary thing passed down from generation to generation, and uh, apparently one of the ways that you can get your soul back into your body involves a rabbit suit that you wear for a extended period of time. I've never done this before, but that series of sentences is so strange, so bizarre, and so troubling to me that I literally have nothing to say about it. I don't even know what angle to come at it from. I just have a fear that the more I comprehend what was just said, the more mentally insane I will become. 
So I'm doing it for my own health, as well as yours. You should be fucking thankful. But just as they're about to go look for his body, his daughter slips on a cliché which causes them to take her to the hospital, which of course causes her to leave her body as well. Hey, I guess it's in the blood! Or the midichlorians. I don't know, whatever the fuck spirit blood is. Get back into your body before something serious happens. Like what? Don't do this to me. It's always about you, isn't it? How things affect you while well, I'm thinking of me right now, and this ghost life feels a lot better than that crappy life I was having to live, and I'm not going back to it. Yes, again, quite clearly understanding teenagers, it captures quite wonderfully that most teenagers want to be ghosts. I... Don't question it, doing so might have them recollect the body suit scene again. But as Cosby starts to fade away for good, guess what they just so happen to find in the room next door? Oh, give me a second! Come on! Are you really trying to do So, insert some Shyamalan bullshit about how everything happens for a reason, and watch as Cosby, coincidentally right next door, reunites with his body. Which does suddenly raise the question for me, did his suit die too? Was that going to be some sort of spin-off? Ghost suit? How do you feel? Well, pretty fucking confused seeing how I can see you in the light even though we clearly established I shouldn't. Dedication. Fuck. So it wasn't really Ghost Dad as much as Comatose Dad, but hey, if they called it that, it wouldn't be nearly as successful. And they all leave to come across a familiar face. Ah! Ah! I am yours to command! Go to hell and sit on a red hot coal! Oh yes! Yes, evil master! And he's off to kill about a dozen more people. This film is dedicated to the lack of common sense, plausibility, and anything representing years of human evolution. Whenever you feel bad about yourself, just be happy that you had nothing to do with the making of Ghost Dad. Guys, this is not only bad, this is fascinatingly bad. Once in a while, there's an impressive effect given the time period, but overall, this is one of the biggest question marks of comedies ever. How could anyone think this could work? How could anyone sign on to it? How could anyone read one page of this script and possibly get a laugh? It's uncomfortable, it's stupid, it makes no goddamn sense whatsoever. It is straight up dead on arrival. And I should know, being dead myself, Actually, I'm not. I just still really upset about what they did on Wicker Man. So I figure this was a very fitting sort of revenge. <laughs> I think I pulled it off pretty good, didn't I? I think a moment like that calls for a good drink. Okay, we figured it out. I'll play both Sam and Max in a terrifying hybrid called Sam Max. While I play the girl from their TV show that no one remembers. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't you say that ghosts couldn't touch things? Yes. Yes, I did. And yet, you are touching us now. That is also correct. You lied to us, didn't you? Right on the money. You never killed yourself. Affirmative. And you did all of that just to see if we were dumb enough to do it? Absolutely no part of that was false. So, why are you just calmly explaining it to us here? Because, quite frankly, you should be ashamed of yourselves for letting me take advantage of you like that. A ghost? A fucking ghost? You honestly fell for that? You were dumb enough to fall for all the stupid stuff that I was making up on the top of my head. I mean, sexy Dorothy? Really? And look at you! You look like McGruff the Crime Bunny! Shame on you. Shame on you both! Now, if you excuse me, I am hoping that the guilt and confusion that you are feeling right now will buy me some time so I can flee to my car like a coward. So, he's not dead. No, but he'll wish he was. Ah! What are you doing with those bunny ears? I'll show you how to do a Max impression. Him in the ball! Ow! Oh! Sexy Dorothy, no! Flip your heels three times upside his head. Ow! 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 Somewhere over your nuts and oh! balls are blue. Oh!
Make a little bit of 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 a little b